So here we are again with our tracker file examining the motion of a mass on a spring. We got this nice sinusoidal curve out for Piper here. And this is wonderful experimental data and we've looked at how to uh, do a fit of it. But we also want to be able to compare that experimental data to model data. We want to be able to see does this actually match with what the theory about springs and forces and motion and everything predict. In other words, does this sine wave look like the kind of sine wave we expect it to be? And so in order to do that, we need to be able to compare the results of a theoretical or computational model, like we have over here in VPython, with our tracker results. Now, if you've watched this channel for any length of time, you know I love me some tracker and I love me some vPython. And what I really love, what I've been trying to do for the last year in my classes, is combine these two, is have these two talk to each other. And so what we're going to look at today is how we can take the numerical data that comes out of vPython and import it into tracker in such a way that we can compare them directly. Now, you can also go the other way. You can also take the data that you get from Tracker and import it into vPython. We're going to take a look at that in a different video. Today what we're going to do is try to get our information from our vPython model into Tracker. So we're going to need to go to vPython first. Um, if you've never worked with vPython before, I'll have a link in the description to how you can get started with vPython and the Euler-Cromer method that we use there. But for right now, what we need to do is create a block. This is going to be the block in our animation. This is going to mimic the motion of our hanging mass here. So think of this gold thing here is going to be the block in here. In fact, let's even give it the color, color dot yellow, just so that they all match a little bit better visually. Doesn't really matter for the physics, but you know, it's, it's nice and motivational. Uh, we're giving this block the same initial position that our mass has over here, uh, negative 0.127, 0 0.230. Now Tracker is limited to working in two dimensions, X and Y. vPython is explicitly three dimensional. We'll just set all the Z values to zero. And then we also need to give it the same initial velocity that we have over here in Tracker. For that, we're gonna go to our VX graph. VX is pretty much zero. I'm just gonna mandate that it's zero because we're not really interested in the X motion anyway. Um, our VY uh, is starting out right at 0 0.341, so I've got a 0 0.341 in here, and again, zero for Z. Uh, the size vector for this doesn't really matter, I've just made it small enough so that it can be seen. Um, let's see, in order to use Euler-Cromer method, I need to know the mass and the force on the, uh, on the block. So for the mass, we've got, I believe this is 100 grams. Um, let me zoom in here. Yeah, that's only one disc. It looks thick enough to be 100. I'm pretty sure that's 100. Anyway, that's something we can fix later. So 100 grams is 0.1 kilograms. I need to have a force on this thing. We'll start it with a force of zero just so we can get the, the variable created. And since this is a spring, we'll have a spring stiffness. I am I, I know these springs run at about 10. I didn't measure it before uh, having to leave campus for the pandemic uh, 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 quarantining. Um, so we're just gonna go with the value of 10 there. We can adjust, the, the beautiful thing is we can adjust that later if we need to. And then DT, we'll, ha we'll try to have that match up um, so that uh, this is about, this is, this is a frame every 30th of a second. So this is a third divided by 10. So our DT is one over 30. And we'll start with a time of zero. So when we go to import this thing, we have some options with how we format the data file. So we're gonna start out with a name for our model. We're gonna call this spring model. You can call this name anything you want. Uh, you just can't have any spaces. So whenever you want a space, just put an underscore and Tracker will convert those spaces to underscores, but don't put in any spaces because when it sees a space, it's gonna jump from one, uh, name, from one variable to the next or from one value to the next. Uh, then we'll give it some column labels. Our columns are gonna be T, X, and Y. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna run this thing for as long as the animation runs. So the animation runs for just over 2.7 seconds, is at 2.73. So I'm gonna say while time is less than 2.74. So in other words, this piece that's indented here, the code is gonna repeat this over and over again. It's gonna animate it with a rate of 10. This has no bearing on the physics whatsoever. It just controls the speed of the animation. 
Here we've got the uh, uh, calculating the force on the block. We're using Hooke's law here, so negative k times the distance between y and the equilibrium point. Our equilibrium point is uh, right about where we start. We did a pretty good job on this video of starting at equilibrium, so we're just going to take this initial value as the equilibrium point, um, which actually I need to fix. I see that I read off the wrong equilibrium point there. Uh, let's make that a 0.230. There we go. Yeah, yeah, 0.230. I think I read off the wrong cell earlier, but that's okay. Oh, no, actually, excuse me. I read it off of the velocity vector. There we go. Okay, well, there we go. Uh, we can easily fix that. Here we're updating the velocity. So velocity, we take the original value and we add to that the force times the time step divided by the mass. That gives us the change in velocity. So initial velocity plus change gives us the new velocity. So we're overriding the block's velocity with the uh, updated version. And then here we're updating the position. We're saying add to the position block.velocity times dt. Um, and then here we're going to update the time. We're going to say update the time by adding onto that dt. And then here we are printing the data. So we have to print it. Glowscript.org doesn't allow you to write to a file because you don't really want strange websites just writing random files to your computer. So we're going to have it print it onto the screen and then we're going to copy and paste that into the file. So let's press Control 2 to run this. Here's our block. It is moving up and down much like our spring did in the video. So you can kind of put those next to each other. So in principle, you can put them next to each other and watch them and say, okay, yeah, that matches pretty well. But we want to be able to really compare these. We want to get a good comparison between them. So here's where we get to the interesting part. So I'm going to shrink this down uh, just so that we can have a little bit more space to work with. I'm going to expand this. And here is our data. Right here is spring model, TXY, and here are all the values of TXY. So each line in this text output represents one moment in the animation, one frame in the animation, or one data point on tracker. And it's got one T, one X, one Y. Then the next T, X and Y. The next T, X and Y, etc. Right? So it's it's updating each of those each frame. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna press Control A to grab this. Then I'm gonna press Control C to copy. We're gonna come over to Notepad. So I've got an empty Notepad file here. Uh, Notepad is a useful program for if you just need to dump some text into a file. Uh, don't do this in Word because Word will have a whole bunch of, uh, you know, extra formatting stuff in there. You just want to use Notepad. We're going to press Control V to paste. So here I've got all the same information I had there. And then we'll go to File, Save. Um, let's see. You want to put this in a folder where you can easily find it. Um, so if you're not familiar with your computer's folder system, uh, go ahead and just put it in the on the desktop or in documents somewhere you can find it easily. And we're going to call this one spring underscore input Hit save. I'm going to write over the file I was testing out earlier. And so now we've got we've got this saved to the computer. So we've taken the data that vPython generated and we are saving that in the computer. Now I'm ready to go back over to tracker. And what I'm going to do, uh, let's not full screen them just for the moment. What I need to do is add a new track, right? So each thing that Tracker watches is called a track. So this thing called Piper is one track. So I want to create a new track and we're going to go down to external model, meaning this is a model that we created using something external to Tracker, right? And so we're going to just click on text file here because that's what we have is a text file. We're going to go to the same folder where we saved this. That's why you want to save it into a folder that you can find. And then somewhere in here is spring input.txt. I've got a lot of files in here. So a little trick, if I put in asterisk.txt and press enter, it will only show me my text files. So let's try spring input. That's what I call the file over here. So this is going to say, I want you to read in all the information from spring input.txt. Click on open. And we get this window here called the model builder. And this is going to ask me a few questions. It gives me a few options. So for example, uh, suppose I need to trim some of my data. 
um, I can decrease the frame count so that maybe my maybe I don't need those last few data points there. Um, I do want all of them, so let's move that up to its maximum value there. Um, I can also have it start at a different point. So for example, let's suppose I, I have a little bit of garbage at the beginning, or maybe I made a mistake there or something. I can trim the beginning. So you can use these two uh, to change when the data gets input. So here is the data file. I can also change where it goes in the video, right? So if you watch this, now the video slider here is moving over. In principle, you shouldn't have to change these. If you've already got this thing set up, um, appropriately if you've got your data you know if you've got your black arrows trimmed to the points that you want and you've got your simulation going for the right amount of time you should not have to change this but you can if you need to if you discover that there was a mistake somewhere you can adjust it here um, you can also look when I change the start frame that this initial time value moves right so I can move it there also speaking of time you've got two options here I can either use the videos time or the data's time um, if I've got my data stored in there, let's let's try the data time. I think that ought to be okay. There we go. Uh, and then what you have to do is you have to click close. And this is the part where I got a little confused doing this the first time. So I am passing on my uh, harder knowledge to you. You notice I've only got one data point here. It's because I haven't run the model yet. I actually have to click play. And now what we're going to see, we're going to see the red dots for Piper and the blue dots for my spring model. So Piper is coming from the video, the blue dots are coming from the data in the file, and we wanna see how well those two match up. Um, now actually, I, you know what? I do wanna go back and change this because I now realize I started this at 0 0.033333 instead of zero. So we're gonna go back over to Model Builder and we're gonna have this thing start in frame 66. We're gonna move it forward one so that my initial time value, actually let's then go back to the video time, there we go. I'm gonna have it start at 66 so that my initial time value is 0.033333, there we go. And we use the video time for that. Okay, cool, now, that ma now this table here matches up with this first line here. And now what I'm gonna do when I hit play is it's gonna start reading through all of that data, it's gonna add that side by side. So here's my blue data, here's my red data. You can see there, they, uh, I think I've got them a little bit out of sync there. We'll take a look when our graph updates. Let's try changing this to Y. There we go. Okay, cool. So I, I, you actually have to run the video once through. They don't mention that in the help documentation online, so I'm passing that knowledge on to you. Uh, let's maximize this to get a little bit better view. So here I've got my spring model data. Let's right click and compare with. So you see, it's kind of treating it like you've got two objects. Remember when we learned how to track two objects? That's really what you're doing here. It's just a question of where the data comes from. This data is coming from the video. This data is coming from an external file, but it's treating it the same way. And so you can see I've got an okay match here. My, uh, let's see, my spring what do I need to do with this? Uh, let's see, my blue one is the model. Yes, so my model is not going quite high enough, which tells me I need to increase my initial velocity. And my period is a little bit too short, indicating that my K value is a little bit too high. So that tells me that I need to go back and make some adjustments to my model. So for example, if this period is off, right, then I need to go back and adjust my value for K. All right, maybe my initial, maybe my initial uh, guess for K was incorrect. Maybe I need to go back and change that. Maybe I need to adjust the mass. I need to do something to adjust the amplitude. Um, I can go back and re-examine my velocity. I mean, my velocity amplitude is matching pretty well. But that's what we would do in a physics lab, would be to try to get the data from the model in blue to match the data from the experiment in red, because that's really what you do as a scientist is you have your data from an experiment, you have your predictions from a model, and you wanna to try to bring those into an agreement with each other so that you know that your model is working well, or you know which model is working well. So anyway, uh, that's some instructions on how you can get data from GlowScript into Tracker. I will leave a link to this code in the description below so that all you have to do is change the nature of this force 
that you're working with to match whatever model it is that you are trying to emulate here in Tracker. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye. And we get this window here called the Model Builder. And this is going to ask me a few questions. It gives me a few options. Hey, buddy! It's the Halfling Invasion! Hi, little man. Can you say hi? Hi!